The General Aviation Joint Steering Committee topic of the month for January 2017 is Single Pilot CRM, or Crew Resource Management. My background goes beyond just general aviation. I have experience in the military as well as in airline operations. Crew resource management is a concept developed for pilots operating in crew environment, whether that be military or with the airlines, but it has significant benefit to general aviation. Many CRM principles have been successfully applied to single pilot aircraft operations, which led to the development of SRM, single pilot resource management. We'll discuss the history and safety benefit of CRM, as well as present and future CRM technologies. And we'll talk about how to use CRM today. In the beginning of airline operations, the captain was in charge and made all the decisions in isolation. These days, the captain's still the final authority, but the crew are involved in the decision-making process, and that's a very good thing. The captain manages those resources to affect safe and efficient operations. SRM is defined as the art and science of managing all the resources available to a single pilot to ensure the successful outcome of the flight. Those resources are both on board the aircraft and from outside sources. SRM receives an entire chapter in the FAA publication, Risk Management Handbook. As of June 15, 2016, both private pilot and instrument rating practical tests are now governed by the Airman Certification Standards, not the practical test standards. While the task elements of the PTS are still included, each task contains a knowledge, risk management, and skills section. A great way to think about each of these is that an applicant needs to demonstrate what they know, what they must consider, which is the risk management, and what they must do for each task. This also applies to pilots undergoing evaluations for biannual flight reviews and instrument proficiency checks. The remaining practical test standards will eventually be upgraded to the ACS format. SRM, whether during pre-flight or while in flight, is a major part of risk management. Airline captains also draw on a host of resources on the ground provided by air traffic controllers, of course, but also by flight dispatch, flight following personnel, meteorologists, and maintenance specialists. And airliners, of course, also have autopilot and flight management resources to manage as well to assist them with the safe operation of their flight. So let's talk about what we have in the general aviation community. Passengers are one of the most underutilized resources, whether they have flying experience or not. Passengers can go a couple of ways. They can, and will if you let them, distract you from piloting, or they can be a valuable part of your crew. Set passenger expectations before you start engines. Give them a synopsis of the flight route and what they'll see and hear. Cover the standard safety items, such as restraints, smoking, and egress. And we suggest a sterile cockpit rule for taxi, takeoff, climb, descent, and landing. Traffic spotting assistance is always appreciated. Passengers can also be chart holders with training and supervision. They can even be checklist readers. If family pets are carried, they should also be assigned as zookeeper duties. All of these things make the time pass more quickly and increase the safety and enjoyment of flight. Verbal communication, i.e. self-talk, while touching or operating a control or performing a task has been shown to reinforce a task and to help ensure that it has been completed. Reading a printed checklist out loud or reciting a memorized checklist out loud are examples. Checklists are crucial the more complex an aircraft is. Studies have shown that we only have so many chunks of information that we can use at any one time. It helps to think of these chunks as buckets on a conveyor belt. Using checklists, especially printed one, helps keep one or more buckets empty to use in case of an emergency or abnormal situation. You may be piloting a plane with the latest glass cockpit equipment that displays traffic and weather. But, you might be flying older technology aircraft with a mobile device for navigation weather data assistance. Either way, it's nice to confirm what you're seeing with weather specialists or controllers on the ground. There are a host of tablet-based aviation apps available these days and many pilots are using them. Be sure you're thoroughly familiar with your app of choice and that you have the latest information uploaded before your flight. We suggest an alternate power source to guard against dark screens when you need them most. Here's a couple of additional tips. Practice with your device on the ground before flying with it. In the air, find out where best to locate it in the cockpit and practice all in-flight app functions while scanning for traffic. Don't let the app distract you from your important flying task. And even though your app depicts all airspace boundaries, give yourself some room. Fly at least two miles outside all airspace you don't have clearance to enter. When it comes to pilot deviations, ATC radar trumps iPad every time. Autopilots are a great help with SRM. Old George can handle everything from holding heading to tracking a navigational course to climbing and leveling off if you know how to completely tell him what you want to do. Good instruction and study of the operation is essential to get the most from your system and to operate it safely. They can help you 
if you're an IFR or VFR pilot. Make sure you do your pre-flight checks to determine that all modes are functioning properly. In the case of many autopilots, part of that check is the autopilot disconnect switch or switches. Make certain you know all the ways you can disable the autopilot. Be sure to practice with all autopilot modes and functions. You don't want to set yourself up for the question, what's George doing now? And don't neglect your hand flying skills. Many pilots alternate autopilot coupled approaches with hand flown approaches. That way they keep their programming and hand flying skills razor sharp. iPad apps such as ForeFlight, WingX, Garmin, AOPA and so on have a wealth of information for pre-flight planning. Additionally, whether you have the resource or not, the internet provides a great deal of info. Explore and see what is available. Duats is great, but not the only source now. We have 1-800-WX Brief, AviationWeather.gov, and many, many other subscription-based sites to help you with pre-flight planning and briefings. The AFD is now called the Chart Supplement. Make sure you have read and understand the info. There are sites like AirNav that will give you most of the info, but make sure you've checked the official source and verified all the details. As stated in the Risk Management Handbook, SRM is about how to gather information, analyze it, and make decisions. Aeronautical decision-making isn't a yes-no process. Each pilot has to consider his or her experience level, currency, physical and mental condition, personal minimums, and so on, and make a decision that manages risks. This is not an easy process. It involves learning how to think in a variety of real-world situations. The 5P check is a way to analyze the information you have gathered during the SRM process and make solid decisions using ADM. Pre-flight is the first time a pilot should apply the 5Ps. Use them to help you make a decision about whether or not to go on the flight. General aviation single pilot operations offer many opportunities for resource management, but most of the human resources aren't in the airplane with you. As you complete your flight planning, a call to flight service will get you the latest weather and operational information, including TFRs. Many pilots use this call to confirm the information they've already accessed online. In a route briefing, just before you take off will attest to the fact that you have the latest TFR information. In the air, those same specialists are available for consultation. They're just a radio call away. All right, so we're just prior to takeoff. You can still delay your takeoff at this point or decide not to go at all. Examples of each P that might change your plan will follow. Plan. The weather is worse than forecast, moving more quickly than expected, or the airport has a nav aid or runway that has closed. Plane. The engine sounds questionable. You ran over an object while taxiing. Some other instance that makes you feel as though the aircraft is not safe to fly. Pilot. You broke your glasses or a contact fell out. You're hot. You forgot your in-flight water bottle for a long flight. Anything that makes you feel as though you are not ready to fly. Passengers. They don't feel good. They forgot something. They don't feel like they're ready to go fly. Programming. You're sitting at the end of the runway and you still haven't completed your route entry prior to arriving onto the runway. So now you're en route. Many pilots wait until approaching their destination before considering these things. Performing the 5P model at the midpoint of your flight gives you time to make decisions, which is excellent SRM. Plan. How's the weather between here and my destination? What runway should I expect? Should I consider a fuel stop? Is everything working according to my original plan, or do I need to modify the existing plan? Plane. Has anything failed en route? Do the engine or engines still sound right, and are indications normal? Pilot. Am I fatigued? Am I hypoxic? Am I making good enough decisions to handle the rest of the flight? Do I need to use the restroom? Passengers. Same as the pilot, plus, are they feeling nauseous? Are they otherwise ill? Are they nervous? Are they scared about the existing conditions? Do they need to use the restroom? Programming. Is my automation, iPad, GPS, or other equipment set correctly? Is it still working as expected? Now we're approaching our descent and landing. Make sure you run a 5P check just prior to initiating that descent. If you have to divert, now is a much better time and gives you more options than nearly arriving at your destination, only to discover you can't land there. Examples of 5Ps for planning. Are you VFR or IFR? What if you have to go around? What will you do? Which way are you turning off the runway you expect to use? How will you taxi to your parking area? Plane. Is everything needed for the approach and landing okay? Are the fuel selectors in the right position? Pilot. Are your checklists ready to be performed? Do you have your proper sunglasses or reading glasses on? Passengers. Are they brief for the sterile cockpit? Are they looking for traffic? Programming. 
GPS or VOR log selected, approach activated, not loaded, what else can you think of? Here are some additional references for you to study at your own pace. If you have any questions on this presentation, please post to the YouTube comments section below, or if you're viewing this on Facebook, add your comments to the feed. Don't be afraid to fly regularly with a CFI who will challenge you to review what you know, explore new horizons, and to always do your best. Of course, you'll have to dedicate time and money to your proficiency program, but it's well worth it for the peace of mind that comes with confidence. Vince Lombardi said, Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. For pilots, that means flying with precision, on course, on altitude, on speed, all the time. Be sure to document your achievements in the Wings Proficiency Program. It's a great way to stay on top of your game and keep your flight review current. Thank you for watching and thank you for being a member of the Maine Flying Community.